There are certain occurrences in this world that are rare, and if you ever get the opportunity to witness it for yourself, strike while the iron is hot. Earlier this year, I made a trip to Salem, Illinois with two of my friends to witness the 2024 total solar eclipse. Despite the round trip taking up most of our day, and the totality only lasting a couple of minutes, it cannot be overstated how incredible it was to watch the sun disappear completely behind the moon. Truly, that was a once-in-a-lifetime event. There was another event this year that isn't exactly once-in-a-lifetime, but it's still an uncommon occurrence. That would be witnessing the world's largest steam locomotive ever built, restored to operating condition and running today, the Union Pacific 4884, number 4014, better known as Big Boy. Now, I've always loved trains, and when I heard that the Big Boy was pulling through my neck of the woods, I knew I had to make the trip. For me, going out to see the Big Boy for the first time in my life was a personal endeavor. More on that later. But for now, it's off to Rochelle, Illinois. Unbeknownst to me at the time, I showed up to the Rochelle Railroad Park a whole day early at around 8 a.m. on Sunday, expecting the big boy to make its scheduled whistle stop. After talking to one of the people at the pavilion with us, I realized that I got the schedule mixed up. Better to be a day early than a day late. From then, it was still early enough for me to relocate to the Global 3 shunting yard, which was open to the public and had Big Boy on display for everyone. Even though I beat the crowd, it was still painfully slow bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the way in. I have to say that it was worth the wait. And let me tell you, nothing could have prepared me for seeing the Big Boy for the first time. In a word, it was epic. I am standing here in the flesh witnessing with my own two eyes the largest steam locomotive ever built Oh, is that right? So they're they're playing with it. Got it, got it. Well, that sucks. The guy in the yellow shirt that was just hanging out was actually on the radio asking him how the pressure looks. Okay. Across the train. There was a lot of milling around, checking out the big boy and getting pictures of it, as well as a couple Q&A sessions with the crew. The place was absolutely jam-packed. There were easily thousands of people there. The whistle wasn't sounding right when they blew it, and as it turns out, it's because Big Boy needs a lot of time to slowly heat up and pressurize all of that steam, which was happening throughout the day. So it was no surprise that the whistle was a bit sad about it. Gonna blow it? Again, again. Again. doesn't sound right. Eventually, when I had my fill of Big Boy for the day several hours later, I started making my way back to the car. By then it was about three in the afternoon. It didn't take me long to realize that I'd forgotten where I parked my car, and for a solid ten minutes I was walking around canvassing where I thought it might be. I don't have a clicker for my car, meaning I couldn't play Marco Polo by hitting the lock button, so I just had to retrace my steps until I spotted it again. Lucky for me, it thankfully didn't take too long to find my car out there in that desert of a parking lot under scorching sunlight. From there, it was on my way back to the Rochelle Railway Park to see if I could spot some trains. The cornerstone of Rochelle's rail fanning community is the iconic double diamond crossover 
intersecting the main lines of Union Pacific and Burlington Northern Santa Fe. The Rochelle community came together to pay homage to the railroads by putting up a pavilion for people to come and watch trains at the Double Diamond. Aside from the pavilion, there's also a quaint gift shop, park benches and picnic tables, an old yard switcher and caboose on display, and an old railroad crossing signal that no doubt guarded one of the double-track main lines and was put up as a monument after being replaced. That's much nicer than ending up in a scrap heap, if you ask me. Here's your Dear John tractors. <laughs> I got to see their factory where they make them. Oh, really? Not those ones, the smaller ones. But that was really good. That's about two, three hundred thousand dollars right there. One of those. Yeah, and you can't fix them either if you need to. Really? I spent the evening winding down and making some new friends at the pavilion and caught a few trains on my Pixel 7 Pro. As a brief diatribe, I don't have a dedicated camera or tripod. For me, I felt that filming on a modern smartphone was good enough for my purposes. The one thing I did, in fact, spend money on was a Uniden BC125AT radio scanner. I bought that ahead of time and programmed it based on a video tutorial on the Distant Signal YouTube channel. Shout out to Danny Harmon in Florida for having such a concise guide on setting it up. Thanks, Danny. The sunset in the west over the double diamond was beautiful. Unfortunately, my pasty whites got cooked by the sun pretty badly, so I'll be dealing with sunburn on my face and forearms for a while. I really need to pick up some sunblock. The big boy was going to make its whistle stop in the Rochelle Railroad Park the next morning. That means I had a decision to make. Should I drive an hour all the way back home just to make the same trip in the morning? Or should I try and hole up somewhere for the night? After debating internally on this point, I decided that I might as well stay in town to keep some miles off my car. To absolutely no surprise, all of the nearby hotels had no vacancy, ostensibly due to the big boy whistle stop the next day. But that wasn't going to stop me from sleeping in my car in the parking lot. The way I saw it, I would save on both gas and hotel fare, get to keep my parking spot 30 feet away from the BNSF line on the south side, and get lulled to sleep by the passing trains. A win-win. Well, as it turns out, I thought wrong on how easily I would sleep that night. I'm six feet tall, and I drive a 2009 Ford Focus. My already tired legs were cramped in the car. So, even with the driver's seat pitched all the way back, I couldn't stretch them out. Needless to say, I vastly overestimated how comfortable I would be. I got some good sleep in regardless, in spite of my excitement for tomorrow morning. 
I did wake up from a passing train around midnight and use that as a cue to try and find something to eat because I hadn't had any food since breakfast. Luckily, the McDonald's a mile away from the park was still open, so I sat down in their otherwise empty diner and ate a spicy chicken sandwich and fries and washed it down with some Diet Dr. Pepper. After that, I reclaimed my parking spot and went back to sleep. By the next morning, I woke up at around 5 a.m., two hours before my alarm. I caught up on some YouTube since I figured it would be pointless to try and go back to sleep again. At 7 a.m., I left the car for the park pavilion to watch some trains with the sparse crowd, and I was dressed perfectly for the chilly weather, jeans and a sweater. While waiting for the big boy, a couple of intermodal freighters came through which helped pass the time. When we weren't watching trains, we were talking amongst ourselves and enjoying the friendly rail fan and company. Unfortunately, my scanner went dead pretty early on, and I wasn't able to capture much of the radio chatter. Once the sun came up behind us, the cold morning air was tempered by the warmth of the sun at our backs. It didn't take long to heat up outside, and glancing over at the parking lot, it was filling up fast. By now it was 8 a.m., and the whistle stop would be happening 45 minutes out. The crowd kept getting bigger, and despite not sleeping well last night, I knew that staying in the parking lot with the car was the right decision. Eventually, the whole venue was packed with people, and it wasn't much longer after that, which was the moment we had all been waiting for. Big boy. Big boy. Boy, you can hear it. Wow. Yeah. A drone. Oh, uh, <coughs> chuff, 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 chuff. Man, listen to that. I don't even know if I want to put my earplugs on. Uh uh. No, I gotta enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear the bell now? All right, viewers, 
what we've been waiting for. The big boy. be my first time seeing it with my own eyes. comes the big boy, folks. Wow. Wow. Magnificent. Magnificent. <laughs> it was simply magnificent. Wow, blow that whistle. Whistle, whistle. whistle. Ha 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 ha
Channel 7 News. Channel 7 News again. off more steam. After a 15 minute stop, the big boy was ready to head out on his day trip to Villa Grove. The beautiful brass bell on the bow of the big boy started ringing and I knew the time had come. With two blasts of the whistle, Big Boy signaled a release of the go. brakes and started throttling. That's a big blowdown. I was filming from the street to witness what was coming next. Burning oil now. Thick black smoke. Dark in the sky. Oh. Let me tell you folks, the video does not do it justice. Here we go. Off camera above the track, there's the drone recording. To signal its approach to the railroad crossing, Big Boy blasted the whistle again. This time, a long, long, short, long pattern, which is a whistle code for crossing a street. Then, it was off Large to the races.
other roots to it. My own wave. There's the observation car with a big dome on top. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I am so jealous of them. I wish I could be on that train right now. Oh. <laughs> oh. And just like that, it's gone. I decided to stick around in the park for another couple hours after Big Boy's departure. That gave the crowd some time to disperse, and it gave me a reason to hang out and talk to more people. Inevitably, I ended up perusing the gift shop and bought myself a t-shirt and coffee mug and a refrigerator magnet for a very special friend. When I was ready to finally call it for the day and go home, I made way for my car. On my way out, I took lots of pictures of the Rochelle Railroad Park and its surroundings. I gotta tell you, if you're ever near Rochelle with some extra time on your hands one day, you have got to check this place out. It's so worth it. With the events of the past 36 hours fresh on my mind, I decided that I wanted to talk about it on my drive home. So I did. You can consider this my final thoughts of the day. Now you'll understand why for me, seeing the big boy for the first time was a personal endeavor. The videos online simply do not do it justice. You owe it to yourself to witness this living legend with your own eyes the next chance you get. I promise you will never forget it. All right, everyone. Well, that's one for the books. So I'm just now going to be pulling out of the Rochelle Railroad Park and heading home. And uh, I got to say, the big boy was something special. Uh, really and truly. Um, words cannot describe how incredible it was to see that thing. Um, like, you, you can, you can really just Head feel the power. First Avenue, then turn left onto First Avenue. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit so it doesn't interrupt as much. But you can, you can absolutely feel the power when it goes by. Um, what I would recommend if you're watching the what I'd recommend if you're watching the video is um, base boosted uh, on like the biggest subwoofers you have and that will be a tiny fraction of what this thing felt like when it was going by because you feel it in your whole body you feel it in your chest especially um, you feel it in your ears when it blows the whistle because it's very loud. Um, but, oh, just absolutely incredible. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was a good experience. It was well worth it. Um, you know, 
I could I could sit here and rant all the way home um, about the big boy, but the the bottom line is when I was a kid, I used to have well, I still have it this this book and it's just it's called the Big Book of Trains and it it had a picture of the big boy in there and frankly. Um, as you know a small child I never thought that I would ever get the opportunity to experience a big boy um, but you know as it turns out it's a pretty small world we live in and the the fun thing is Rochelle Illinois is not too far away from where I live so this is a pretty easy drive to get out here. Um, definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, the crowds were not terrible today, as you might have seen, because the, the biggest crowd that there was was yesterday, where everyone was essentially packing into the, what they call the Global 3 freight yard. It's like a shunting yard. Um, and that was essentially... Uh, just lining up to, to see the big boy and like while it was stationary uh, all day while the crew worked on it they kind of blew the whistle a little bit but you know nothing compares to seeing the thing in motion um, it, it's just incredible and I am I feel humbled and honored to have witnessed firsthand a piece of uh, a slice of Americana essentially um, you know the the big boy being the largest well one of the 20 largest steam locomotives ever built only one of its type uh, preserved uh, I gotta make sure I'm going the right way here almost turned out too early um, you know one of It's like it was. It was a, the largest steam locomotive ever built for its day, and it still remains a, the largest steam locomotive because they aren't really building steam locomotives like that anymore. It's just um, oh, well, I missed my turn, but I'm going to come back around and get it that way. Um, getting distracted talking, but anyway. So yeah, I mean just it, it's it's incredible I got I got a bit choked up when I saw it for the first time because simply because of uh, how how amazing that was to, to see it with my own eyes but um, yeah yeah great great stuff But it's a, it's a piece of American history. It's a piece of railroading history. Built built in 1941. You know, it it just it, it almost it's it's not just a train engine, like in the sense that it's a big inanimate object. Um, it's in essence. A locomotive like what what is a locomotive what does a locomotive do well it is a source of locomotion this this big big boy uh, is it it's what powers the entire train all the way through and being the largest steam locomotive ever built and possibly even the largest train locomotive period on the entire planet like seeing this thing larger than life witnessing it firsthand um, you know it's it's incredible uh, I, I feel almost a spiritual connection with the train and I know that sounds a little bit 
you know, maybe a little bit whacked, but, um, it, it's, it's true. Like I, I, I got emotional over it because it, it's like this locomotive has its own personality. Um, so it just an absolutely incredible machine. It's, it's a living, breathing, uh, machine for sure. Uh, no, no doubt about it. stuff happening up here. Got a semi in front of me. Anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm all too excited to just talk about this thing. Uh, so it it really is incredible. But anyway. Anyway, that's that's pretty much all she wrote for today. Um, when I get back home, I'm gonna have a lot of video editing to do. I might I might even like throw together something of a um, how would I describe it? Um, I would be I would be throwing together like a not really a speech, but a script for, like, the end of the video, uh, because so far everything that I've been blathering about is completely unscripted, um, but, you know, you, you get, if you've seen any of the other videos on my channel, like, you get my raw feelings and my raw gut feelings and emotions, uh, and, you know, my, my honest, genuine reaction when we talk about this stuff, so it's, it's fun. Um, I, I never realized going to the Rochelle Rail Park for the first time, Railroad Park, um, just how many rail fans there are out there, uh, because, you know, this is really kind of my first major foray into rail fanning, um, I've got, uh, like, a lot of experience watching trains, but that's just as a little kid, and this is like, it's kind of like one small step for rail fanning, but one giant leap from the BNSF Metro Station in Downers Grove to Rochelle, Illinois, which is the Double Diamond crossover, absolutely beautiful, uh, beautiful place great people, just, you know, you, you can, you, you can just talk to anyone you want, and it's like, we all have this thing in common, you know, it's like an unspoken brotherhood, where you show up, and there's people from all different walks of life, uh, you know, coming to witness something truly magnificent, and I apologize, I, I am getting a little bit choked up just talking about it too here because man I, I made a lot of friends I I can count on two hands the amount of people who I added on discord um, so you know it's it really is truly incredible um, and the what's interesting is that we all come out in full force to see the big boy and there's always a big crowd because people are fascinated with this stuff, you know. Like, it, live steam on American railways used to be a regular occurrence. Not, not so much anymore because everything is diesel now. Um, even the big boy, as you saw it in the video, it's not running on a traditional coal power because um, when it was restored the very important decision was made to, um, you know, convert it to oil power, because, uh, these days oil is a lot more ubiquitous than coal, um, it's, uh, it, it burns cleaner, uh, there's less risk of setting fire to the countryside, 
like so many coal powered trains do. There's no ash as a waste product, it all just burns off. Um, and it's fascinating to see because, like, you don't really, it doesn't really affect, it doesn't impact the experience in any way for it to be, um, uh, you know, oil fired instead of coal fired, uh, which, which is cool. Very cool. So, yeah, I'm, he's found on, I-88 right now, and heading back home, and there's nothing but cornfields and wind farms out here, but um, I live closer into the city, particularly the suburbs of Chicago, well not Chicago itself, but the uh, greater Chicagoland area, as we call it, so, uh, you know, Ch Chicago, Chicagoland. So it's, it's fun to kind of take a trip out to Rochelle, you know, um, like a two-hour round trip from home, just get to see the countryside. And, um, you know, if you guys have made it this far into the, into the video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. It, it means a lot to me. I mean, for me, like... YouTube, it's a hobby. I don't look at it as a job or, you know, um, uh, some financial prospect. I do it because it's fun and I enjoy it. And hopefully the people who view my channel are like-minded about the content I put out. So, um, that being said, I'm not really a blogger or a, a vlogger, as it were. I'm more of a gamer myself. But, you know, um, today was a big reminder that I, I am and always will be a real fan first and a gamer second. So who knows what the future holds. Maybe I'll be out here doing this again sometime. But um, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. This video is dedicated to my late Uncle Jim and my late father who both would have loved to be there with me today. I miss them dearly, and I especially miss them this weekend. There is a lesson in that. Always cherish the time we have together with the people who we love the most. Thank you for watching.